Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be cooking and eating Thai food for 24 hours. In my last 24 hour challenge where I only ate Japanese food, I had a lot of requests for different places and I actually wrote them all down in my book that's over there. But I settled on Thai for this month just because it had the most requests and I love Thai food. Thai food is so good and I love ethnic food that it's like super flavorful and Thai food is like just that. It's sweet, salty, spicy, sour and just an explosion of flavors everywhere and I love it so much so so excited. Yesterday I did a little bit of background research on Thai cuisine and their dishes just to see what kind of ingredients they predominantly use and then I went to the grocery store and picked some of the standouts and then today I'm just gonna try and figure out what I want to make. For lunch and dinner I'm still juggling between a couple dishes that I want to make but for breakfast I'm pretty set on making some Thai iced tea which was one of my favorite drinks growing up along with this banana roti thing that I saw online which apparently is really popular and commonly sold on the streets of Thai. I've actually never tried it so I don't know how authentic or close to a real thing it's gonna be but I'm super excited. It kind of looks like a crepe and I love crepes so let's go ahead to the kitchen and get cooking. <laughs> So I know I just said I want to make some banana roti for breakfast, but I opened up my cupboards and I took out the flour container and ah, it was empty. And I think it's because my mom just finished making three cakes, so she used to bought the flour and she just went out right before I realized that there's no more flour left. So I have no car, so I can't go to the grocery store and get some more flour. I'm kind of bummed about that, but that's okay. I have another plan. I have a backup plan. Um, yesterday I made some mango sticky rice and I don't want to include this dish in this video just because I feel like everyone knows what mango sticky rice is but I'm gonna make do because I'm getting hangry so I can't wait that long. Um, so I have some mango sticky rice here and all I did was steam up some sticky rice in this bamboo basket for I think like 20-25 minutes just until it's like cooked and then I made a really simple coconut sauce just by adding in some coconut milk, some sugar and I think a pinch of salt and then I just let that like dissolve the sugar and yeah that's really it i'm just gonna top it off with mango and they got like a quick breakfast and i'm also gonna finish making my thai tea this all it has is a black tea bag and it has like a oops it has a vanilla tea bag this one right here and i think this one gives it kind of like a orangey look you could just use a thai tea mix thing but i couldn't find it and also it has like yellow dye or something that I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm just gonna use this. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of vanilla to give it that little um, oomph of sweetness that Thai tea has along with these two products that I actually found yesterday. It's um, got coconut condensed milk and this coconut evaporated milk. I'm gonna use these and put that into the Thai tea. I'm gonna put a cup of ice in. I'm gonna pour it in the Thai tea. And then I'm just gonna add in the condensed milk evaporated milk mixture that I just made. I just finished putting together my mango coconut sticky rice and I just topped it off with a fresh ripe mango and I sprinkled a little bit of a sesame seeds on it. And yeah, I already know what it's gonna taste like, but I'll give it a whirl. The perfect bite is when you have that coconutty sticky rice with that fresh ripe mango and a little bit of the sesame seed. It's like the perfect balance is so good. Mm -hmm. It's so good. And the Thai tea is really good as well. If you can find the condensed milk and the evaporated coconut milk, you should definitely try this like mixture out. It's so good. It's like, it's not just black tea anymore. It's like enhanced. And also adding that little bit of vanilla too is really good. Okay, I'm going to finish up breakfast and do some work and then probably have a little bit more because I'm so hungry, but um, I'll see you for lunch. Oops, forgot to show this, but I had another bowl without the mango because I had to save the mango for later. <laughs> So it's been a little while after breakfast and it's around, um, oh my god, my phone did not, my phone cracked. It's 12.36 right now. So what I was going to say was for lunch, I'm going to be making a noodle dish and I know you're probably visualizing and thought I'd make pad thai, but I'm not making pad thai. I'm actually making pad si mao 
also known as Thai drunken noodles. And since I'm assuming that most of you already know and love pad thai, I thought I'd change it up a bit and try to recreate this dish I had a couple days ago. And pad si mao, they use like thicker rice noodles. And I don't know if every pad si mao recipe does this, but that one had um, tofu, vegetables, and had a little bit more of a brown savory sauce. So I'm gonna try and recreate it. It tasted more like soy sauce to me. I don't know, it was really good though. So I'm gonna try and recreate it and hope it turns out. Okay, for the sauce, I'm gonna start by using some vegetarian mushroom sauce. I think they usually use oyster sauce, but I'm gonna use this vegetarian mushroom flavored stir fry sauce. I'm gonna start with maybe like three-ish tablespoons of that. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna add in a tablespoon and a half of dark soy sauce, and then a tablespoon and a half of light soy sauce. Or you can just use three tablespoons of regular soy sauce. Just for a little bit of sweetness, I'm gonna add two or three teaspoons of coconut sugar. I'm gonna start with two, I'm gonna taste it. And then for a little bit of acidity, I'm just gonna add in a teaspoon of rice vinegar. I'm just gonna give it a little taste. Good, maybe a little bit more sugar. I already prepped all my vegetables here, so I got some carrots, some bell peppers, some Chinese broccoli, the sauce I just made, ginger and garlic, the red chilies, some baby corns, um, the mock meat, and I have my rice noodles soaking in some like hottish water. I'm gonna move over to a large-ish wok here, and I'm gonna turn it on to high. All right, I'm going to add in the garlic and ginger and the red chilies. So I forgot to press record, but I added the scallions once the um, garlic and chili and ginger was like nice and fragrant. And then I'm also going to add in the rehydrated soy protein. And since we're not using like real meat, you don't really have to cook it for long. Okay, I'm going to add in the um, bell peppers and carrots too. And also the baby corn and also the Chinese broccoli. And then it's been like 30 seconds. I'm gonna add in the strained um, noodles. Ooh, did I make too much? Jeez. And then I'm gonna add in the sauce now. I might need a bit more sauce, but that's fine. Okay, once it's all nice and cooked, I'm just gonna toss in a bit of lime juice. Oh my god, it smells so good. Woo! All right, I'm gonna serve it up. I plated it up and then put on some more fresh basil and, oh my god, it looks so good. It actually smells like the one I ate last time at the restaurant, so I have high hopes, I hope it tastes good. This tastes just like the one I had at the restaurant. Oh my god. If you like Pad Thai, I think you'll really like this one, so you should definitely give this one a try. And I think the one at the restaurant, yeah, they use tofu, but I use these like fake mock meats, and I think this goes way better than the tofu. The tofu is just like pan fried and kind of mushy, but this one actually gives it like a chew, so like more texture. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna go finish this up and do a little bit more work and then probably go to the gym and then I'll see you back for dinner. I finished the other plate and I'm eating another one because it's so good. Oh my God. <laughs> mm. Watch the art here. Woke up at 11 o'clock, I ain't got... I came back from the gym not too long ago and it's around 5 30 right now so I think I'm gonna prep some dinner I'm gonna be making some curry but not yellow red or green Thai curry I'm gonna be making masaman curry I tried this at the same restaurant I had my drunken noodles at and it's very like peanutty and it has like an Indian kick to it because of all the Indian spices but it's really good so I'm gonna try and make it and yeah let's get started
All right, I can talk again. So I'm basically frying up the um, curry paste around like two and a half, two tablespoons with a little bit of um, the coconut milk. And I'm just gonna let that fry off a bit until it smells all good. Okay, it's starting to smell really nice, so I'm just gonna add in the tofu or the fried. And then I'm just gonna add in the coconut milk and some vegetable broth. I'm just gonna let this simmer for three, four, five minutes, and then I'm gonna add in some coconut sugar, tamarind, and soy sauce. So I'll be right back. All right, so it's been like three or four minutes. I'm gonna add in the potatoes that I cubed into pretty big chunks. I like my potatoes big, so that's what I did. Um, and then I'm gonna add in some soy sauce, a bit of tamarind paste, some coconut sugar, I don't know if this is traditional, but I added in some peanut butter and I forgot to press the record button, but yeah, I added in like maybe a fourth cup. So it's been around 15 minutes and it reduced a lot. So I think this is good. The potatoes are cooked and everything, so I'm just gonna take it off the heat and then serve it up with some rice. Woo. I just served it up and it looks so good. The sun is still so strong right now and it's already like 6.45 and I'm like sweating, but I'm gonna give this a try. Anyways, it's not too spicy, so I won't be sweating while eating it, hopefully. <laughs> give the potato a try. It smells so good, oh my god. This is so good, but I definitely could have added a bit more like crushed peanuts maybe to the actual gravy and then a little bit more peanut butter. The peanut butter is like settled, but I like mine a little bit more peanut buttery. The one at the restaurant was like a lot more pow peanut butter um, or like peanuts. And um, it's not too spicy, which is good because like or else I would be like sweating right now. But, but if you do like more spicy, uh, just add in more curry paste or add in more like um, the, the chilies. But yeah, I'm gonna finish up eating this and probably have another serving because this bowl is pretty small and I'm gonna watch Netflix in the meantime and then we're on to dessert, the last meal and I'm really excited for this one because it's like fresh and I used to eat it a lot when I was a kid so yeah, I'll see you then. Okay, so I'm ready for some dessert and I made some coconut pudding with some fresh mango and I've been so excited for this all day and I made this during dinner because it needed time to chill so I'll show you the process of making it now. Okay, so into like a medium, smallish kind of saucepan, I'm adding in some tapioca pearls that I soaked. And then I'm gonna add in some coconut milk. And then I just, I put the heat to like a high-ish medium. And I'm also gonna add in some coconut sugar. And then once it comes to like a strong simmer, I'm gonna reduce it and then let it simmer for like 15 minutes until it's nice and puddingy and thicky. Oh yeah, by the way, for the coconut milk, I used half Aroy D full fat coconut milk and I used um, half So Delicious coconut milk. And I'm just gonna keep stirring every few seconds so that the bottom doesn't burn. I bought a new brand of tapioca thing because I couldn't find the other one, but the other one did not do this, but it might be the coconut sugar. It's gonna give it a taste. Okay, once it's like nice and thick, I'm just gonna turn off the heat now and let it sit while still stirring. And right now, once you taste it, you can add a little bit more sugar if you want. I'm also gonna add in some vanilla now, actually. Around a teaspoon of vanilla. All right, I'm gonna take it off the heat. So I'm just gonna let this chill on the countertop for, mm, until it's cool, and then I'm gonna put it into the fridge to chill. It smells so good. It smells like coconutty and fresh, and the mango is like sweet. Um, I used coconut sugar this time and that's why I think it turned brown, but usually it's a lot more whiter. The pearls actually firmed up a lot, so it's very thick and puddingy and just how I like it. I'm gonna, I already know it tastes really good, but I'll try it for you on camera.
Alright, I'm gonna finish my Netflix show and finish eating this and then I'm done. So that's everything I ate today on my 24 hour Thai food challenge today. And there was a little bit of a hiccup in the beginning, but overall I'm really satisfied with the rest of the day. I got to eat my favorite cuisine or one of my favorite cuisines the entire day and it was really nice. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and got some inspiration to cook Thai food in your own kitchen. And if you guys liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to continue this series. Let me know what your favorite Thai dish is or which Thai dish you're excited to try first. Also, if you have any suggestions on the series name, I'd love to know because I'm juggling between a couple and I don't really like any of them. So if you have any suggestions, I'd love to know. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're all having an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one.